Boy, oh boy, have I got some updates for you in this video, some technicals to share with you with SPY, QQQ, IWM, checking out what happened with NVIDIA following ASML's early release of their earnings report. And then I also have Tesla and Bitcoin to update for you. And I'll give a little bit of the technicals on SoFi, given its recent rise that we saw and where it could potentially go from here. So I'm going to get right to it. Put up the charts for you, SPY first. So yesterday, on some pretty decent volume, we actually made it back inside the rising wedge pattern. And this is actually something really important to pay attention to because with, with rising wedges, sometimes you get a bearish reversal coming out of those. So it's definitely something to be watchful for, for SPY. Even if the market is going to continue to march up for now, this is something that still at some point in the future, we could see that potentially fall out the bottom part of that support line. So we're going to be watchful for that. Right now, we're in okay shape. We did pop up outside of it, and that was a bullish thing. We got kicked off at rejection right up here at about 584.87. So how close did we get to that? Well, on Monday, what we saw was 585.27, so up by 40 cents. And then yesterday, the high price, 584.90. I would say that's a darn good resistance line that we have there. And then we also got an engulfing candle yesterday, which could mean a further sell. So we're going to have to watch for that. And especially with the moving averages that you see on here, the 5 and the 13 are the ones specifically to pay attention to. Let me hide those technicals so you can pay attention to the two moving averages that are here. So with those, if we start to ride or fall off the bottom of them, like we saw back here, that could be a bearish thing. Right now we're sitting on top of them. That is a bullish thing. So watch for dangling off the five first. Watch for the five to cross the 13. That could be a bigger sell if we head that way. Engulfing candles can be a signal for a further sell. So we want to be watchful for that to take place tomorrow in the after hours. We get Netflix earnings. That could be something impactful as well. Going over to the queues, what do we got? Another rising wedge pattern, a much bigger engulfing candle, being that it's tech heavy compared to what we have for the S&P 500. So the queues do track the NASDAQ 100, by the way, having the big tech in there account for a very large percentage of those 100 companies. So when we look at this one, this is what I was talking about. Let's take away the technicals for just a moment. Coming down below the five, we found support at the 13 period EMA. We want to watch that we don't start riding or, or dangling off the bottom of those moving averages because that can be a further bearish sign. So where does that put us from a technical standpoint? Well, when you look at this, check out the trend line across the top of this that we are still inside the rising wedge pattern. We touched off the top resistance line. We could potentially come down to, at some point in time to this bottom support line. Now I say come down, but we can actually move across as well. So that's something to be aware of. Check out these prices. If we're going to stay inside of this thing, we still have a shot at 502. We got to watch the momentum as well, the RSI on the daily and weekly charts. I don't know that we're in the position yet to see that drastic drawdown, but it is something we want to be watchful for and something that keeps me from being uh, an all-in bull at this point in time. I am cautiously Still bullish, I still have my short hedges out there that I collect from time to time and it keeps me afloat and keeps the keeps the juices pumping and allows me to uh, buff my long positions that I have in the markets. So moving over to IWM, what do we get? Well, we got that touch on 225. As a matter of fact, we exceeded that 225.50. So just 53 cents above what I have here for the bottom of this resistance area. You can see the rejection we got in the pre-market hours. We're actually creeping back up towards that. We still have bullish momentum. That's a good thing to see. And we're sort of have the across the top of these peaks. Let me see if I can zoom out here. I might actually have to choose a higher time frame so that we can see. Let's go to the weekly chart. There we go. Across the top of these peaks is what we're watching for. So there's the previous all-time high. There's the previous peak that we have. And we're creeping up on that top trend line. So I know that this is kind of busy to look at. That's why I give you a zoomed in view. These technicals and breakdowns of them, by the way, are available over at the Patreon. You can find that link down in the description. Click that, sign up. Head on over to the Discord that's part of that Patreon. You will find my technicals on Watch channel where I give these technicals well before they hit YouTube. As a matter of fact, if you look at TMF, I put out on Friday that we were most likely at a near-term bottom for that. And we're up over 6% since that time as of the pre-market hours this morning. So you guys can check that out and more. Tesla, NVIDIA, BTC, SPY, QQQ, IWM, I have Snow, Palantir, you name it. There are a ton of different technicals that you can check out over there. 
right now. And you can also see my buys and sells and talk to me and my community members. And I have a lot of upgrades coming that way throughout the next several months, as a matter of fact, really building out the products and services. I'm very pleased about it. And I think that my community members are also gonna be pleased. We'd love to see you over there. And if you guys wanna do this technical analysis yourself, check out the link for Stockmo Academy down in the description. Use code word doctor when you sign up for it. It's gonna give you a massive discount. Back to the technicals. So what we're looking at here for IWM is that we're not to that trend line. We should watch for a rejection near that trend line at about 227. And we have resistance just north of that at 228. And we, we have a fair amount of stopping points for the Russell 2000 stocks. And I don't know that we're out of the woods yet when it comes to when we hit that next all-time high. I think that there's still a significant drop for the Russell 2000 stocks coming at some point in time before we hit that big rally that sends us up to all-time high prices for the Russell 2000. So it's something that I'm definitely watchful for. The last thing that I want you to see are these diagonal red and white and green lines that are going up from left to right across your screen. Those are part of a massive bullish channel that is literally decades long when we look at that. we These actually extend going all the way back to 2009 for where we start to establish this bottom trend line for the green line that we see on here. So definitely worth paying attention to. For NVIDIA, we got a bit of an engulfing candle, though recovering a little bit from what we saw with the ASML mess yesterday, dropping about, I think it was about 15% for that one as those earnings came out, looking at softened demand. And now, mind you, that doesn't necessarily mean that AI itself is down and out as though they make the machinery to make the AI that we have. It's just the, the orders. There's a little bit of speculation coming in. Hey, could there be a slowdown coming? Could it be on our way? We still have NVIDIA earnings to look forward to and a lot of big tech earnings. We want more light shed on what's going on with Blackwell. How long does this demand hold out? Does it push on well past 2025 into 2026 and 2027? Because the longer that that growth continues, to stay the, uh, uh, for NVIDIA, the longer it keeps the wind in its sails and can push up. We did not get back up to the all-time high price. You can see we fell short of it. And then yesterday helped us fall back down below, catching support 130.95. Once again, let me take away the technicals. Look at the support on this yellow 13 like we saw with the QQQ tracking the NASDAQ 100. I'm telling you, it really is worth paying attention to. We need to make it back on top that five. We don't want to see us dangling off the bottom of this because that could be a bearish thing. That volume move yesterday could be signaling for what's coming up for us in the near term. So we have to be watchful for that. And corporate earnings can be the thing that is the saving grace for us. So by the way, another another reason this could drop just besides the, the ASML stuff that we saw is just de-risking before TSMC reports their earnings on Thursday. So that's tomorrow in the markets. So some people taking some of that cash off the table before we have that catalyst coming up that could be that coin flip moment. And we just need to watch because we don't really exactly know until it happens. And I think that you're going to see after it happens, we're going to see a flush back in if those earnings are good and the projections are good and the forward guidance is good. And if it is seen as weak in any way, then it's going to draw down on these. And you're going to see the shorts come out instead. So let's pop this back up here. Wrap things up with Bitcoin and Tesla, and I'll, I'll put in SoFi at the end for you. So for Bitcoin, these technicals I put out, I refreshed, put in yesterday over at the Discord. Once again, you can find that link down in the description. You can see the resistance that, man, we hit this on Tuesday. We had a high price of 67,922. And so just barely north of what we see here. And then today we're fighting with it as I record this video, trying to punch into that resistance area that we have up here, trying to crack back up above 68,000, hopefully to getting us up into the 70,000 range again for the first time in a while. We actually have to go back here to July to where we actually get $70,000 or well, about $70,016 is where we peaked out. And before that, we have to go back to June before we really see uh, well into the low $70,000 range. We could be on that run that takes us there. We're getting higher lows, we're getting higher highs, and we need to watch for that momentum to hold out over time for Bitcoin. Tesla, this is that rising wedge pattern that I was talking about with SPY and QQQ. And you can see the fall that we took out of that following the, the Tesla robo taxi day. And now we got a lot of indecision that you can see within these bottom three candles here. That is something that we want to keep an eye on because it's still being decided. Are we going to pop up from here back up over the 50 SMA and EMA that we have? And you can see we're down below the 5 and the 13 as well. The RSI currently bearish. We had a big volume move. And then we just uh, right now can't quite seem to decide what we're going to break outside of the support or resistance. 
Here are some of the other prices you can look forward to for support and resistance. Depending on whatever we see coming out of this, we had one, two, three rejections off resistance so far. And right now, support's just holding. So there's a reason why we see these long wicks. There's a lot of indecision. Don't know exactly which way to go. A lot of it is signaling bearish, but we're up above the 200 days. So that's signaling bullish. And so right now, Tesla is most definitely sorting that out. I think big tech earnings plus Tesla earnings themselves are really going to help decide which way we go in this limbo. Mind you, Tesla earnings are next week. I'm going to put out my Tesla stock price prediction and earnings projection prior to that. As a matter of fact, I hope to kick that out this week so that we have something to decide on before the week of Tesla earnings. Now, I said I'd wrap things up with SoFi. So here you can see the rise for SoFi. You can see that we're in resistance right now. You can, And these were, by the way, the last technical that was drawn on here to get these is August the 5th. And you can see how it's still planned out the resistance that we had coming all the way into over two months later, strong volume move, probably bullish the next day it was. And now we're trying to fight this out. If we can get out of that resistance, we can make it up another about 8% to almost $11 per share to that 1088 that you see up here. Like I said, these technicals available. I, I put this out over at the Discord yesterday due to some sound issues. Didn't get my video out yesterday. Today, it should be good to go while you're watching this video. So I guess you would know that. So absolutely, check those out. SoFi still has some gas in the tank, although it might soften a little bit on the daily chart because the RSI well overbought on this. So if you see this pull back, it's a perfectly natural thing. The weeklies, not quite overbought, but getting close. On the monthly, we are just in ripe bullish territory. So we could see some near-term weakness. We could see a little bit of profit taking coming off the table, especially going into the weekend coming up. Maybe that happens. If we do see a little bit of that softness, then it could be followed by once we cool down on the daily momentum, possibly on the weekly momentum, then we could see that next push up for SoFi stock if it's going to continue in a bullish direction. If we're going to come back to supports, you can see those supports that we see right along here, especially if we don't make it down to 922. That's actually really good information, really good confirmation that we could continue upward. We have that five EMA to watch for as well. Coming down and touching that could be where we find that support as well. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see the rest of my technicals, see my buys and sells, join that Patreon, come on over to the Discord. We'd absolutely love to have you over there. And then also snag that link for the technical analysis trading course through Stockmo Academy. And I'll tell you what, I've gone through that course myself as an, an educator for 17 years, having my doctorate in education. I vetted this thing. It is incredibly easy to follow Stockmo and Mrs. Mo themselves educators with even more experience than I have, and they put together a solid product. And it also includes how to use the bread recipe trading strategy that I use myself, that Stockmo uses to find profit in these markets with the trading that we do, whether that is an upward movement, downward movement, you name it, the bread recipe can help tell you either way. It can help indicate the direction that's coming. And then you also find out how you can profit off of that it's a wonderful strategy, very easy to use. The course walks you through exactly how to set it up and includes a learning community where you can go and talk to others who use the bread recipe, including Stockmo and myself. And there's also, you can see the results that people are having as well. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember my friends that learning is earning. We'll see you in the next video.